Drivers aren't the only free agents. NASCAR has three new broadcast partners all bidding for the best on-air talent. How's it going, y'all? My name is Eric. Welcome to Out of the Groove. Happy Friday. We've spent a lot of time on this show in recent weeks, in recent months, discussing NASCAR silly season. Teams shutting down, other teams expanding, drivers swapping rides, looking for their next opportunity quietly in the background. Fox, NBC, now the CW, Amazon Prime, TNT are all having their own bidding war trying to sign their own high-profile free agents, build their own teams. Today, the Sports Business Journal published an article from Adam Stern, where he broke down the latest rumors and reports from the media side of the industry. Click the link down in the description below to read the full piece. I encourage you to do so. We're just going to hit on a few of the highlights here. Most notably, Adam Stern reports that ESPN's Marty Smith has had discussions with both Amazon Prime and Warner Brothers Discovery about potentially joining the booth alongside Dale Earnhardt Jr. next year. He also reports that NBC's Steve Letart has had similar conversations, while Fox's Adam Alexander has talked to both Amazon and Warner Brothers, as well as The CW, about potentially anchoring the Xfinity Series broadcast next season. Adam Stern also calls Jamie McMurray a hot commodity and suggests that Rick Allen could be a candidate for some non-NBC jobs. Remember that Rick Allen is expected to be replaced by Lee Diffie sometime later this season on the Cup Series broadcasts. So those are the highlights. Again, click the link down below for even more detail, but just my reaction. First, let's talk about Amazon Prime Video and Warner Brothers Discovery slash TNT slash HBO. It sounds Sounds like Dale Earnhardt Jr. is putting together his dream team. We know he's close friends with Marty Smith. He's worked with Steve Letarte going back to his driving days. A booth of Marty Smith play-by-play, Dale Jr., driver analyst, and Steve Letart, crew chief analyst, makes a ton of sense on paper. Marty Smith has the voice, the charisma to anchor a television broadcast. Dale Earnhardt Jr. brings the energy and enthusiasm, the nostalgia. And Steve Letart, I think, has shined the past couple of seasons with NBC. He is a tremendous in-race analyst. I could see that trio doing all five Amazon and all five TNT races. My only question is, would ESP let Marty Smith go? Would Marty Smith walk away from the worldwide leader? Maybe he won't have to. Much of what Marty Smith does for ESPN nowadays is college football. College football is a fall sport primarily, which means NASCAR's summer stretch doesn't really overlap with college football too much. Perhaps Marty Smith could be on loan for those select NASCAR races. I think it's a realistic possibility. My only other concern then is that I don't think Marty Smith has any play-by-play experience, at least none that I'm aware of. Correct me if I'm wrong. He's been more of a, a writer, a sideline reporter. He's he's a long-form interview guy, a podcaster. We'll see if he if he's capable of adapting to the real-time live play-by-play booth role. I think he's capable of it, but we'll have to wait and see. The Sports Business Journal reports that Adam Alexander is seen as the favorite to broadcast all Xfinity Series races on the CW next year, and to me, that's a great fit. He's been doing that for Fox. I think he knows the Xfinity Series about as well as any current Fox or NBC commentators. He's got a ton of experience working with different analysts in the booth every single week. He has to know the drivers, the teams, the Xfinity Series storylines because his guest analysts often don't. Usually he has you know Joey Logano and Daniel Suarez in the booth with him, and obviously they know a lot of the key players in the Xfinity series, but they're not studying that series week to week. They got their own business to take care of on Sundays. Adam Alexander is responsible for a whole lot. He keeps those broadcasts on the rails every single week. He is tremendous at what he does. I'd like to see the CW pair Adam Alexander with a Jamie McMurray type, who Stern writes is a hot commodity. Jamie and Adam have a ton of experience working together at Fox on NASCAR Race Hub, and why not add Larry McReynolds to the mix as well? Larry's only 65 years old. I know he hasn't been on the road consistently, in the booth consistently in recent years, but he can still do it. He's got plenty left in the tank. The two Macs know each other very well. They've worked with Adam Alexander for years. You've got your play-by-play guy, your driver analyst, your crew chief analyst. That works. I'd love to see that trio broadcasting on Saturday. 
As for the two incumbent networks, I expect Fox to keep Mike Joy, Clint Boyer, and Kevin Harvick together. Sports Business Journal reported earlier this summer that Mike Joy is expected to return for 2025 as long as he and Fox can get a new contract together. I don't anticipate any dramatic changes there. As for NBC, let's assume Lee Diffie continues his play-by-play -play duties. NBC is losing IndyCar next year. Fox is gaining IndyCar. That should free up Lee Diffie. Let's assume Jeff Burton stays who could NBC get to fill that third spot? They don't need another play-by-play -play guy. Rick Allen would not make sense. They could promote one of their pit road reporters like a Marty Snyder type, but again, I think that third spot needs to go to a former competitor. With Steve Letart likely going to one of these other networks, maybe another driver fills that role. Could Dale Jarrett step up? What about a team owner like Brad Doherty? He's worked with NBC for years. I think Kyle Petty is the most likely to fill that third seat. Lee Diffie play-by-play, -play, Jeff Burton analyst, and Kyle Petty analyst. Kyle Petty obviously is very outspoken. He's not afraid of the camera or the microphone. When he's not filming for NBC, he's usually filming for NASCAR's channels. He's filming with his family. Kyle Petty has plenty of experience. I could absolutely see Kyle Petty stepping into that booth full-time with NBC. So those are those are my realistic predictions. In review, Fox, I think, will stay the same. Mike Joy, Clint Boyer, Kevin Harvick. I think Amazon and Warner Brothers Discovery TNT will feature the same three-man booths. They've already got Dale Jr. doing both. Why not keep it simple? I think they'll collaborate. I think Dale Jr. is building a dream team. Marty Smith in the play-by-play -play role. We'll see how he adjusts. And Steve Letarte serves as the crew chief analyst. That's my prediction there. As for NBC, I think Lee Diffie with IndyCar going to a rival network. He'll be freed up to go full-time NASCAR. Jeff Burton will stick around. And as I just explained, I think Kyle Petty, by default, will fill that third seat. And for the Xfinity Series races, I think Adam Alexander and the two Max, Jamie McMurray and Larry McReynolds, will broadcast all 33 races. This is my realistic prediction as of now, July 12th, 2024. Let me know if you agree with these predictions down in the comment section below. Hopefully someone, somewhere, somehow can make room for Alan Bestwick. Maybe FS1 Truck Series broadcasts? They probably can't afford him. I'd love to see Alan Best recovering NASCAR next year, but I'm just not sure it's realistic, unfortunately. Again, let me know if you agree with my predictions down below. I'm looking forward to next year's broadcast. I'm hoping some of these new partners come in and are willing to try new things, look to evolve NASCAR broadcasts. When it comes to NASCAR media coverage in general, obviously TV is the most important. That's how millions of fans consume the sport on a weekly basis. But beyond just you know Sunday afternoon, afternoon, Monday through Friday, with no NASCAR race hub week after week, day after day, you got to wonder what kind of content is going to fill that slot. I, I think shows like mine prove that there is an appetite for daily NASCAR content and conversation. I know NASCAR has built this large production studio in North Carolina. I'm not sure how they're going to use it. Going forward, any and all NASCAR related content, especially on social media or on any digital platform, needs to be authentic, genuine. I think part of the reason NASCAR has struggled to reach younger fans is because so much of the content they produce comes off as sterile, over corporatized. Every single driver is wearing a sponsor logo on their hat and on their shirt. Every show, every segment that NASCAR, Fox, NBC produces is sponsored by somebody. Shoot, the last lap of the race is sponsored by a bank. Young fans like me don't get that. We can see right through that. We know that's not authentic. It's not genuine. I get that you have to pay the bills, but like... Formula One has their drivers starring in fashion magazines. You'd never see anything remotely similar in NASCAR because Ross Chastain has to have the Bush Light logo everywhere. Chase Elliott can't go outside without Napa Auto Parts tattooed across his face. I think there's a reason that channels like mine, quite frankly, have succeeded. Folks like Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s Dirty Mo Media, more independent media outlets. And I get that Dale Jr. is tied to NBC. They've got to deal with Sirius. Like, they're not fully independent. But you look at a lot of their popular shows, Denny Hamlin isn't paid by NASCAR. Denny Hamlin has his own self-interest to look out for. He's worried about his own driving legacy. He's worried about his team, 2311. You look at other shows on their network, like The Teardown, Jeff Gluck, Jordan Bianchi, I think two of the most objective and fair journalists in any major sport. 
They're not paid by NASCAR. They're authentic. They're honest because that's what sells subscriptions to The Athletic. Shows like mine on YouTube or, or like Kenny Wallace, for example, I think resonate with fans because shoot, I'm just over here yapping. <laughs> we don't work for NASCAR. We don't work for a particular team. Sure, I am wearing a logo on my head right now, but they don't sponsor me. I just like Dr. Pepper. <laughs> and I thought it was a cool looking hat. Matches my shirt, sort of, kind of, not really. But what you get usually when you tune into my show is an honest opinion and at least in my opinion, I think a very objective breakdown of the latest NASCAR news. In my experience, and granted, I only have a few years of experience, that's what most fans are looking for. It's why, like, Kevin Harvick's Happy Hour podcast that Fox Sports is producing is really interesting to me. Because it's Fox. It's official, mainstream media, NASCAR, Fox, branding all over the place. But at times, Kevin Harvick sort of goes off book. Like, this past week, he called out the electric vehicle prototype, said straight up, I'm not a fan. I don't think it has a future. That wasn't in the script. I imagine NASCAR didn't love him saying that. Not all of Harvick's show is that way. There are plenty of moments where he clearly toes the Fox line. But part of me hopes that that new podcast does well because it will show Fox, a very corporate partner, that fans demand authenticity, honesty. Not everything has to be safe, sterile, corporate friendly. There are just so many options out there today that you can't operate like you did in 2002. I hope these new media partners like Amazon Prime and TNT and the CW see that as well. I'm very excited, for example, about you know House of Highlights and Bleacher Report being involved in the next deal because they do have a huge social media presence. They do have or they have earned some level of credibility from their audience. Their younger audience views those channels as more honest, genuine, and authentic. And it's exciting that I guess more NASCAR content will be plastered there. So I don't even know at this point, like I said, I'm just yapping on this show, but going forward, any NASCAR produced content needs to focus on being genuine. That's what made NASCAR full speed on Netflix this off season, such a refreshing piece of media because while sure, it was very NASCAR heavily branded and produced, the drivers were more open with the cameras than I think we're used to seeing in the modern day. I like that. Fans like that. More of that. More of that needs to be the focus going into this next seven-year media rights deal. Um, but that's all I've got. Hopefully that made sense. Leave a like if you enjoyed this video. Leave a comment down below if you agree with anything I said. If you have your own thoughts you'd like to share, subscribe for more NASCAR content daily. And a big thank you to my Patreon supporters. Pocono Raceway this weekend. I will talk to y'all soon. Have a great weekend, folks.